Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to have a quick introduction to radicals in this lesson. And radicals include square roots, cube roots, or roots of any uh, indice. Uh, that doesn't really matter there. We'll, let's take a look. Alright, so radicals and radical functions. Let's look specifically at square roots first. A square root would be the same as taking a square like this one. And let's say that we knew that the area of this square was 100, I don't know, it can be a feet, a square feet like this. The square root would be the same as asking what the side length of that square is. So if I had 100 square feet, <clears throat> and the unique thing, thing about a square is that it's the side length multiplied by the other side length, which are the same, they're the same side length. So we're really kind of asking what number multiplied by itself is 100. And in this case, it would be 10 feet and 10 feet. So if I said, what's the square root of 100, you could say 10. Or, again, what's the square root of 100 square feet? Or the side length of a square with an area of 100 square feet. Then you would have a side length of 10 feet. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's asking what number multiplied by itself is 100. The truth is that we could have taken negative 10 times negative 10. And that's the nice thing about um, this principal square root. We're only looking at the positive value for these. So we're only asking for the one value, which in this case is the positive 10. Even though in the future you're going to be asked for that negative 10. Now with radicals, we have this, it, it kind of looks like a long division sign, right? But it's got this, it's not curved or anything like that. Um, it's kind of like a lightning bolt, some people have told me. Um, it has an indice, which will go in this position right there. It's not a zero. Um, sometimes it's a three, sometimes it's 13 even. But if it's ever two, it's not going to show up right there. So if you don't see a number right there, you could fill it in with a 2 if you wanted to. So before we continue, let's let's look at some, in fact, let's look at uh, just 1 through 12 real quick. And the reason we're going to look at these numbers is because I want to look at their squares just right here. And a square just means it's some kind of power of 2, right? So all of these equal some value. And let's start there with 1 squared, which means 1 to the power of 2, that would be 1. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. 4 to the power of 2 is 16. And I'll just list the rest of these for you. You can plug them into a calculator if you'd like. Now, these numbers here in purple are what we call perfect squares. And the reason these are unique is because if we were to take these, and this would represent the areas, right? If the black numbers in black were the side lengths of some kind of square. So let's look again at these numbers here in purple. So these perfect squares, the nice thing about them is if I were to square root each and every one of these, then I would get the side length if these were the areas of a square. So what this means, and this is what makes these perfect squares unique, the square root of them, the principal square specifically, uh, and even the negative square, I guess it doesn't matter, but these come out as whole values. There's no decimals. Uh, we're not looking at fractions here. They're just whole values. So it's important, to, if we can, to memorize these as much as we can because we're going to see these numbers show up quite a bit, not only in this class, but in the next class as well. Now another interesting thing about these is pretty much all numbers between them are irrational numbers which means the decimal it would give us a decimal value which would go on forever and ever without repeating or terminating. And you can see that in a calculator there's no real pattern for the decimals if we take the square root of numbers between these. So this is just another slide uh, looking at the square root, the number m is the square root of n if m squared is n. Every positive number has two square roots, 
But again, we're only looking for the most part at positive square roots. Simplify the following expressions completely. Write D and E if the answer is not a real number. So the square root of 121, again that's saying if we had a square with an area of 121, what would its side length be? And we saw that already in our perfect squares. That would be 11. This next one is interesting because of that negative sign, which just means we're going to take the opposite of whatever the square root of 49 is. 49 is also a perfect square. That's 7 times 7, so this would be negative 7. This next one is, uh, and let's again consider what it's asking in terms of squares. What is the side length of a square if that square had an area of negative 16? Now we may say, well, 4 and 4, and that won't work because 4 times 4 is positive. So we usually just go straight into the negatives. However, negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16. What this means is that the square root of negative 16 has no real solution. Now there is a huge difference between uh, this one and the one we did in purple there. The negative is on the inside of that radical, whereas for the negative square root of 49 it's on the outside, which means we're taking the opposite of that, not the square root of negative 49. There's a huge difference between there, those two that we need to understand. So here's the nice thing about square roots is they are the inverse operations for exponents, kind of. So this one kind of has an indice of 2. So what this is really saying is we've got the square root of some value. we got x plus 6 multiplied by x plus 6, right? I just expanded that exponent. Well, since the indice, which is not shown here, is 2 for the root, it means that what number multiplied by itself would be x plus 6 squared? And that would be, well, x plus 6. Now, we don't really need the parentheses there, but you can put them there if you want. I'm not going to. Now, another way to look at this is the 2 and the indice 2 cancel each other out, which would just leave us with that x plus 6 anyways. So either way that you want to look at it, it's the same, and you'll get the same answer either way. This problem, estimate between two consecutive numbers, this value, the square root of 78. For these ones especially, we'll want to see that list of perfect squares. All right, so there's the list that we had from before, and we need to look at what two values, particularly the squares, right? So I'm looking at the purple numbers. I want to know what values 78 would be between. And that would be 64 and 81 in this case. And yeah, we are taking the square roots of these because we're taking the square root of that 78. 78 is bigger than 64, but it's less than 81, so its square root would be the same for both as well. Now we know the square root of 64 is 8, and we know the square root of 81 is 9 from our chart there, which means the square root of 78, it would be bigger than 8, but less than 9. So our answer is 8 and 9. Those are the two consecutive numbers that the square root of 78 is between. Now I just plug this into my calculator just to see, and I can find that the square root of 78 is 8.832, which just confirms that my answer here is correct. All right, what about the square root of 65? This one's going to work the same way. I'm just going to look at the 65 for now. Uh, the 65, it's bigger than 64, but less than 81. I'm just looking at that list in purple. Of course, we took the square root of 65, so we'll take the square root of 64 and 81 as well. It's bigger than the square root of 64, but less than the square root of 81. And the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of 65 is bigger than 8, but less than 9. So my answer would be <clears throat> 8 and 9. Now that's just coincidental that that happened again. And also I can put in the square root of 65 in my calculator. 
which gives me a decimal of 8 point, about 8.1. So I know for sure that it's between 8 and 9. This one strictly, want, strictly wants a, an evaluation of the square root of 57 on my calculator. So I'm just going to type it in exactly like I see it. And I want the decimal value. We'll do four decimal places. That would be 7.5498. That's what I got after just typing it into the calculator. Finding a cube root, it's the same as asking the question or telling someone to find the length or edge length of a cube if we gave you the volume. Now, since it is a cube, all side lengths are the same, which is kind of like a square, right? And that's the unique thing about a cube, which makes this nice and easy to solve for. But cube roots can be negative because any negative, and this is what it's saying, uh, if, we, if I multiply any negative by itself three times, then I, my answer would be a negative. So keep this in mind. We're looking at cube root, so it's the same symbol with the root, but now it does show the ind indice of 3. That would be the cube root. All right, so let's look at these ones. That's the cube root of 125. I'm going to evaluate this one straight across, all right? So I've got my cube root of 125. What I would do to evaluate this is uh, I've got to figure out what mu number multiplied by itself three times is 125, because if I can do that, the cube root of some number to the power of three, then my threes will cancel out, and I would just be in the index of three cancels the root as well. So whatever value that is will be my answer. And right here I see that it's divisible by 5 at least. And that would be multiplied by 25. Which, now that I'm dividing by 5, I can just continue to divide by 5. I see that it's 5 to the power of 3. So the cube root of 5 to the power of 3 is 5. Now that was probably a little bit more than we needed. Uh, if we look at some perfect cubes, just a few of them. The perfect cubes would be, I don't know, let's go to 5, all right? 3, 4, 5. If I were to cube these, then I would get these values. And that should just about do it for what we need in this class for now. Which means the negative cube root of 64 would be negative. There it is, my 64 right there. Negative 4. And then I've got 5 to the power of 3 which is 125. Oh, let, let's look at this next one, right? This one is the cube root of negative 27, and I can have negative cube roots, so that's fine. And that corresponds with the 3 in this case. So the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. And those are my three answers for these ones. If we look at higher indices, it just uh, the indice just tells us how many of the duplicated factors are needed to make a root. Uh, what that means is we're looking for groups of, in, of the indice. So the indice tells us how many is in the group will make a perfect, um, I guess, um, root for these values. That may not make a lot of sense. Let's, let's look at some examples, see if we can make some sense out of that. So you've seen this before. And again, I'm looking for 243 to be some kind of power some kind of base with a power of 5 on this. Now 243, um, it's not a common number, but I can see that it's divisible by 3, because if I add all the numbers together, I get 9, which is divisible by 3. So that would be 81, which is divisible by 9, I know for sure, which is also, both 9's are divisible by 3. So this would be 5 3's multiplied together, which means 243 is the same as 3 to the power of 5. So let's change this. This is the fifth root of 3 to the power of 5. I'm going to expand that. 1, 2, 3, four, uh, 4, 5 right there. So the 5, the indice, tells us how many duplicates I need in order to make this a full value. Now again, it would be like the exponent 
canceling out the indice. So the answer to this one is simply 3. <clears throat> and this is the fourth root of 625. Uh, we're doing the same thing. If I can get a group of 4 as factors of 625, then I can know that that's my answer. So I'm going to split this up. I see that it ends in 5, so it should be divisible by 5. Looks like that would be 125, which is still divisible by 5. 5 and 25, which would be 5 and 5. So this is really the fourth root of 5 times the purple 5 times my two green 5s. Well, that's a set of, that's a set of 4 right there, which means that <clears throat> this would be the same as the fourth root of 5 to the power of 4. But the 4 cancels out the 4 indice with the root, so my final answer would just be 5. All right, guys, that does it for this lesson on radicals. Thanks for watching. If you guys have questions, please leave it in the comment below, or if you like the lesson, that'd be great, too. If you did enjoy the lesson or if it did help you with your math, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, you guys.